Hi, I'm Mike Friesenegger, and I'm a Linux and Data Center Technical Specialist. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the why of System Z, why you want to be talking to your customers, and how our customers can actually save money through the use of System Z server consolidation. So let's take a look at a typical customer's environment in a distributed world. They have an application that's distributed. And when customers are thinking about the distributed application, a lot of the times they're thinking about the production servers that, that make up the application. In this case, they have two servers. A lot of the times they forget about all the other servers that they have in their environment to make sure that this production service and this production application, this production workload works as well as it's supposed to. In our example here, we have two servers that are focused at user acceptance testing, two servers that are focused at uh, quality and assurance, and two additional servers for development. So when we start looking at it in a distributed environment, you easily triple or quadruple the number of servers that you have in your environment for a single application. Now think about a customer's environment. It's just not one application. It's a whole bunch of applications all put together to provide the business some kind of IT service. So we're talking hundreds and maybe thousands of servers out there that are supporting the business and the distributed applications that need to run the business. So now let's translate this to dollars and cents. What does it mean from a CIO's perspective? So a CIO looks at the relative costs and says, oh, my hardware costs are very inexpensive. And I like that because that doesn't uh, cost me a lot of money. But then they forget about all of the other pieces that are put together to make this distributed application work. They forget about software costs, especially the big software hitters like your Oracle, your WebSphere, your DB2 UDB, the management software. That is a very high dollar cost to an organization. And when we're talking about a distributed environment, you're not just going to have Oracle on your production server. You're going to need it on your UAT servers. You're going to need it on your QA servers and your dev servers because they're going to need to test it throughout the whole process to make sure that it works. So software is a high dollar cost in a distributed environment. And don't forget, this is multiplied by hundreds, even thousands of servers out there in a customer's environment. The other thing that the CIO sometimes thinks about but doesn't think about a lot is the power, the cooling, and the people cost that are required to maintain these systems. Power and cooling. The more servers you add, the more power is going to be required, the more cooling is going to be required. Some data centers are maxing out on the amount of power and cooling that they have available to them. And then don't forget about the people costs for managing this environment. Every server has to be touched. Every physical device has to be racked and stacked and fired up and powered on and managed and maintained. That costs money. That costs time. People costs are one of the biggest costs when you're talking about this environment. So that's the distributed side of the house. So let's take a look at System Z and let's see why a, a CIO might be interested in talking to us about Linux on System Z and how they can save money in their data center. The System Z hardware itself is built up of these things called engines. And the engines uh, can be turned on in a number of different ways. For our discussion, IBM would turn on an engine and turn it into what we call an IFL, an integrated facility for Linux. That IFL has special code in it that only allows it to run Linux or run the virtualization engine called ZVM on top of the system Z. So you take one or multiple IFLs. In this example, I have four IFLs. You create what we call an LPAR, a logical partition. And on top of that logical partition, you can install Linux. Or better yet, and the most cost-effective way of doing it, is taking the virtualization engine called ZVM, you know, similar to Zen or VMware, but this is virtualization on the mainframe. Take ZVM and install it on top of this LPAR. And then at that point, you can go ahead and install, or you can create virtual machine guests. In this case, I have four examples of guests. My production, my UAT, my quality assurance, and my dev. But you can have hundreds, literally hundreds of guests. From a SUSE Linux perspective, you buy SUSE Linux for these four IFLs that are here, and then you can spin up as many virtual guests on top of this ZVM environment that you want. So right there, a customer is only paying for those four IFLs from a SUSE Linux perspective. So now, from a hardware cost, when you look at System Z, you're going to find that System Z hardware is going to be much more expensive than your distributed environment. 
What you're doing is you're getting a very robust, very powerful, very scalable box that has a mean time between failure of 30 to 50 years. Most customers never experience downtime unless they choose to bring the system down for some reason. Now, this is where it really gets good and this is where it's gonna perk up your CIO's ears. If software costs are killing them over here in the distributed environment, then when they look at how the software is licensed on the mainframe, they're gonna find that they can save a lot of money. And the reason why is just like SUSE Linux Enterprise, application vendors that sell their software for System Z sell it per IFL. So if you buy, say Oracle for instance, you're buying an Oracle license for that IFL, and you can spin up as many Oracle instances that you want on top of that IFL. So in this case, I would have four IFLs, I'd buy four copies of Oracle instead of hundreds of copies of Oracle or even eight copies of Oracle that I have over here. So right there, I'm saving a considerable amount of money from an Oracle perspective. Oracle's just a database. Don't forget, you're probably gonna have a Java environment like WebSphere. So you're gonna be stacking a lot of costs on top of that. You may have some management components. That'll also get stacked on top of it. When you start looking at software savings on the System Z environment, a CIO can save hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, when we're talking of comparing it to the distributed environment. And then don't forget about the power and the cooling and the people costs. The Z footprint is very small. Most of the time when you see a System Z box, it looks about the size of a large refrigerator. It doesn't take up a lot of power. Actually, when customers move to a System Z environment from a distributed environment, they see their power costs drop dramatically. They see their cooling costs drop dramatically because this thing is just not taking as much power. It's not generating as much heat as all of these servers in your distributed environment. And then from a people cost, I don't want to give the impression that uh, you're letting people go. You're just allowing people to focus on the important things within a customer's environment, allowing the CIO to redeploy those people to take care of what's important for their business. You don't need as many people managing the System Z and the virtual guests on top of the System Z where you needed within the distributed environment. When a CIO is looking for saving cost within their data center, think about mentioning to them about System Z and the server consolidation capabilities that are possible with System Z. They may not even be a System Z customer. We've had a lot of new customers come on board with System Z that have never been System Z customers. I'd like to just mention the SUSE Linux Enterprise Consolidation Suite for System Z. It's a suite that Novell and IBM have put together and you can go to your customers and provide them not only the System Z hardware, SUSE Linux operating system, Mono, training, um, testing, and support.